Ken Baker there. And for the government's position on the NDIS rollout, I'm joined now by the minister responsible, Senator Mitch Fifield. Senator Fifield, welcome. So this is still in the very early stages of the National Disability Scheme. Overall, how do you think it's going so far? Well, look, we're, we're pretty much uh, where we aim to be and wanted to be at this stage. Uh, we had uh, four trial sites commence in the middle of last year, uh, three trial sites commence in the middle of this year. Uh, we have about 9,000 participants in the scheme to date. We've spent about uh, $400 million. Uh, we've got uh, some serious work to do over the next six months as we negotiate the bilateral agreements with uh, the various jurisdictions for uh, the full rollout. But, uh, look, we're, we're learning lessons from the trial sites uh, as it was the intent. Uh, a lot of work to do, but uh, there's a lot of goodwill uh, on the part of uh, all groups to make this work. Are you aware of this situation in the ACT where there seems to have been what's described by some people as a hasty transition between the services that might be provided on the state or territory level and the new scheme coming in? Yeah, look, parallel to the introduction of the NDIS, um, a number of uh, states who have been in the business of direct service provision uh, are uh, going to get out of that business. Uh, some states like Victoria uh, haven't been in that business for a long time. So uh, it's a decision which is coincident to the NDIS but uh, not uh, a product of it. Uh, but it's really important that we make sure uh, that there aren't service gaps there. So uh, the ACT government have uh, flagged that uh, they'll be concluding uh, this year, their early intervention services. So the uh, National Disability Insurance Agency has conducted a tender uh, to make sure that uh, that gap is filled uh, and to give the market in the ACT uh, time to develop uh, and new service providers time to enter. enter. But it's really important that uh, the states and territories uh, maintain their commitment uh, up to the point uh, where the uh, NDIS will take over. Are you convinced that that retreat from the sector hasn't been too hasty in the ACT and those services will be able to be filled? Well, uh, let, let me just say that the ACT has set a very brisk pace uh, in relation to uh, their timetable for ceasing services. Uh, and I say to state and territory governments, uh, what we've all got to keep our eyes on here uh, are the individuals uh, to make sure that in the transition they continue to be well serviced. So you say that's a brisk pace. Do you think that decision should be revisited? Well, uh, we want to monitor it uh, carefully uh, and make sure uh, that uh, there isn't a service gap. But uh, I heard Ken Baker say earlier uh, that he's, uh, he's confident that uh, yeah. his members, who are the private providers and not-for-profit providers, uh, do have the capacity to meet that demand. As you say, it was always intended in this trial period that there would be challenges identified and talks about how they could be overcome. One of the uh, big issues at this stage seems to be accommodation. What are your plans in relation to addressing that significant challenge in the years ahead? Well, I think it's important to, uh, to recognise that uh, the NDIS will have a, a strategic role uh, in relation to supported accommodation. Uh, certainly there will be uh, recurrent funding for personal attendant care for people who need that support to be able to live uh, in the place of their choosing. Uh, then there's the other side of things, there's the, the bricks and mortar uh, and the, there will be the opportunity for the NDIS uh, to partner with other organisations. Uh, you might have a group of uh, ageing parent carers uh, who've got a bit of capital, who've got some land that uh, a church has donated, uh, the sums don't quite add up and they might put a proposition to the agency and the agency can leverage uh, or it might be another disability organisation has a good proposition. I think that's the way for the agency to uh, support uh, people who uh, want to live uh, independently but uh, it's also really important that uh, whatever the agency does, does not provide the opportunity for state and territory governments to abrogate their ongoing and core responsibilities for public and social housing. Uh, that will remain a state and territory responsibility, but the agency uh, will have a role in seeking to partner with other organisations and leverage uh, their investments. Will the agency itself be involved in constructing accommodation? No, the agency uh, won't be a, a builder uh, or an owner uh, of, uh, of housing. Uh, that's not part of their business, it's not part of their charter. Uh, what 
their opportunity is, is to uh, use uh, some of the agency's funds uh, to partner with other organisations and to, uh, to leverage uh, from uh, some of the commitments that they might be making. Mm. And in the current, with the current budget situation, can you see that there are going to be strains on the situation with the NDIS over the coming years as there is in other sectors of government spending? Well, the NDIS is core government business uh, and that is providing uh, extra support to people who face challenges for reasons uh, beyond their control and uh, the government uh, in its first budget uh, honoured its commitment that the NDIS would be uh, fully provided for in that budget year uh, and in the forward estimates and it's one of the reasons why uh, we're seeking to cut our cloth in other portfolio areas uh, is to make sure that we have the funds uh, for what I see as the core business of government. Yeah. Okay, Senator Fifield, thanks for talking to us today. Thanks very much, Joe. A Qantas plane